What a contest. Real quickly, I'd like to remind the QCA members to please come on around back here backstage for us. There's Borch right here. We're going to get to the results soon, but first, we've got a very, very important presentation to be presented. Please welcome to the stage the chairman of the Southwestern District Hall of Fame Committee, Mr. John Devine. Thank you very much, everybody. We got a very special for us presentation to make for you. We want to introduce you now to the inductees into the Southwestern District Hall of Fame for 2012. Uh, to joining me to make these presentations are the members of our committee who will be joining me on stage here as soon as they can find their way up. Uh, uh, Art Swanson, Mike Bortz, John Schneider, and Greg Elam. And the five of us are the committee. We're responsible to look at the Southwestern District, at all the many men who do so much for us, and find those whose contributions merit consideration for the Southwestern District Hall of Fame. Then we narrow that list down to however many we think should uh, be presented to the board of directors, who then approve them, and then uh, they are there approved into the Hall of Fame, we're going to introduce them to you tonight. Before we do that, I'd like for, to ask you to refer to page 21 of your program, which tells you at the top a little bit about the Southwestern District Hall of Fame. It was begun in 1987, and over the years, approximately 60 individual Southwestern District barbershoppers have been inducted. I, as I look at the list, I see a lot of old friends. I knew, knew and know so many of these guys. Many of them are sitting out here in the audience. And it's a I, can, I can tell you it's a special privilege to know them. I see O.C. Cash was one of the original inductees. I, I didn't have the pleasure of knowing O.C. Cash, but I understand he and Greg Elam were childhood friends. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, You'll see, if you look on the pages uh, right ahead of page 21, the four fellows that we're going to induct into the Hall of Fame tonight and introduce to you. To, to introduce the first one, I'd like to call on uh, Art Swanson. Here we go, Art. Well, what a pleasure it is for me to, to, uh, to be the guy that introduces Keith Houts. Uh, those of you that, that know Keith know what a wonderful guy he is. He's been around a long time. He probably was singing in quartets before most of y'all joined the society. Uh, I had the pleasure of singing with him in, in Great Stage Robbery, and where I really got to meet him and, and know what a wonderful guy he was. You've, you've seen the, uh, uh, the, the uh, write-up about him in the, in, the, in the program, and you know the things that he's done. I think one thing was left off is he spent eight years as a uh, stage presence judge. So other than, other than as a stage presence judge singing in in uh, International Championship Quartet, the Side Street Ramblers. And those of you that, that kind of don't remember the, exactly the Side Street Ramblers or Keith's role in there, can, can you just imagine him standing there like that with that big old bird on his, on his arm and, and feeding him that, that cookie? And, and I mean, the guy is, is a genius when it comes to musical comedy. And uh, I'm, uh, once again, I am. Now, why, why? <laughs> Why am I not surprised that he's back there making monkey shine? Anyway, my guy, Keith Houts. You can do it again if you want to, I don't care. <laughs> hey, it's good to see all of you. Uh, this is the best bunch of people you can get anywhere. Uh, I, you know, I got to travel all over the world. And I thought I wouldn't, wouldn't have enough time to give you 55 years worth. <laughs> so uh, I want to let you know there's nothing better than barbershoppers. It changed my whole life. It gave me an awful lot to look forward to. And uh, there's one person witnessed to me. 
What is it? Hello? <laughs> yeah. yeah you know, I've already heard that. Let's not get on. Oh, he gave me three minutes. Thank you. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Is my three minutes up? My watch stopped. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hey, I, no kidding. I love all of you. And all through these years, there hadn't been any better people anywhere. Yeah, I love you. Thank you very much for this honor. And I want you to know, you can't catch this, so don't be afraid of me. <laughs> Our next inductee will be introduced by Greg Elam. Here we go, Greg. Let me ask Gary to come on and stand here. Um, there's no reason to not share all this together. All the guys in this audience who are currently an elected officer of your chapter, the Southwestern District, or the Barbershop Harmony Society, any of those officers, please stand up right now. Every one of you that is serving. And any other officers who have served in the past but are not currently serving, you stand up a minute also. Folks, these are the people that let it happen, that make it happen, that cause it to happen. Be grateful for them, and I thank each one of you. You are heroes to me. I trust that you've read the write-up in the, the uh, program about Gary. It goes on and on and on about his service to you and us. Yet I tell you that you really don't realize the total impact of this committed barbershopper. When I asked, was asked to serve as convention chairman several years ago, the phone rang immediately and it was Gary saying, let me help you. Now that is fundamentally a stupid thing to do. <laughs> but it was a generous offer, and he meant it. Hundreds of you signed up online to come to this convention, and you did it the year before, and you did it the year before, and the year before. And if you had a problem, guess who called you or sent an email to you to sort it out for you? Same guy. He sits outside the door here and doesn't see the performers because he believes the most important thing he can do is make sure it's smooth for everybody else that has a question or a concern. Now, come on, you can't do better than that. Friends, helpfulness matters. Caring that things are done well matters. And the desire to assure that each of you enjoy your barbershop experience matters. There are those that have served in the past and then sort of retired. Not our Gary. In some way along the way, the chores that he has done or is doing matter to you and have affected you. He is a superhero that has earned tonight's salute, Gary Hanna. <laughs> but before Gary comes to the microphone, he doesn't know this, but it's a private thing that I've been asked to share. One of his other quartets, he's had several through the years, has had a tradition 
of exchanging a token in some surprising way among its members. This has been going on for 15 years. <laughs> 15 years. And apparently it shows up unannounced and not planned by him. And I got a phone call when the news was out. Could I bring along, if they would send it to me, I have this ceramic pipe, whatever it means, but I didn't want to fail the tradition of it surprisingly showing up. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> I got to tell you, when I first heard about this thing, I said, okay. They said, short acceptance speech, and I said, okay. This morning I told Greg, you know, I've been working long and hard because it's really hard to fill 35 minutes. <laughs> <clears throat> and he says, no, no, it's three to five minutes. This damn pipe <laughs> wound up in my only picture as Barbershopper of the Year when my, it, it was a Christmas present that was passed back and forth secretly by my quartet member and myself trying to get rid of it. <laughs> and now I'm stuck with it. Thank you very much. <laughs> And then I wonder, you know, what am I doing on this stage with the likes of, or honored by, with the likes of Gary Parker and Keith Houts and Dwayne Brost? And I wondered, well, it's because we all do what we can in the ways that we know how to do them. Even you guys, especially my chapter secretaries out there, you know I love you. You're the best. But together, we keep the wheels on, all us guys that just administer stuff. And in return, we get pipes. <laughs> <laughs> so to the, the Southwestern District uh, Hall of Fame committee, the selection committee, and to the other members of the Hall of Fame, to the district board, my wife, Donna, are you tearing up, Greg? I just want to say thanks to all of you. It's, it's a great honor. I'm thrilled. Couldn't be more thrilled. Thank you very much. To introduce our next inductee, Mr. John Schneider. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let me offer my congratulations to, uh, to all the inductees of the Hall of Fame. It is truly a great honor. Uh, a lot of the things... To, to quote that famous MC from last night, Todd Rebus, I do a monologue act here. <laughs> All right. It's so great to see Keith here. It's a, it really is. Uh, a lot of the things that were said about uh, Gary Hanna as far as his leadership and his devotion and his contributions uh, are echoed in the contributions of Dwayne Brobst. Uh, there's no need for me to, to outline all of the things that uh, Dwayne has done over the years. You have it there in your program. Uh, but, but just some of the highlights as far as, as I'm concerned that they indicate the depth of his commitment and his willingness to, uh, to volunteer and to make contributions not only to the district uh, but to the society in general. President of the Southwestern District 1997-98, uh, served on the faculty of Harmony College, Harmony University for 15 years, dean of the Australian Barbershop Harmony College in 2005, dean of their contest and judging school, traveled through New Zealand, uh, coaching, uh, and he's been on the Harmony uh, Explosion Camp, Harmony College staff in 12 of our 17 districts over the years. 
He truly is a man who has given, who continues to give, uh, who's never shied away from responsibility and always been a part of making things happen as he has here this weekend with, uh, with all the judging program. It's indeed an honor to present to you for uh, induction into the Hall of Fame, Mr. Dwayne Brobst. Thirty-five minutes, huh? Wow. You know, I, I, for the life of me, I, I've been trying for the last few days to figure out why in the world that I'm, I was going to be standing here tonight. And I guess when I look at it, there's, there's, there's a nemesis that haunts me from time to time. And he just went back a moment ago and upstaged me just as they were getting ready to introduce me. I think his name is Carl, isn't it? Uh, it's people like him, and there are a few other people that, that have been instrumental in my barbershop life, and it is a barbershop life. It's a lifestyle. Uh, in 1972, one of my dear friends, who's no longer with us, literally hijacked me and took me to a barbershop meeting after about five years of trying to get me to go and I was just too busy and just didn't have time to do it. And he came and picked me up one night with, on the premise that he was gonna take me and show me something that he had built. He was a craftsman and, and he was always building things and as we got away from the house and we got to the neighborhood that he lived in and he passed on by that neighborhood and I said, where are we going? What, I thought you had something to show me. And he said, I do. And I said, well, what is it? And he says, it's barbershop. And he said, you've already told me that Kitty's out of town and the, your other boys are at their grandmother's house and you don't have any excuses and you can't lie your way out of it. And, and so we're going to barbershop. And if you don't want to go, that's okay too but I'm not taking you back home. I'll let you out here and you can walk back home. <laughs> and we were probably five miles away from home at that point. And it was a life-changing experience for me. And along the way, I've met some people who have been life-changing people for me. One of them is, was a man named Larry Ager that a lot of you knew that took me under wing and, and was a mentor and a coach and, a, and just in, you know, encouraged me from the first day that we met. And I wouldn't be here tonight if it were not for Larry Ager. And I have to, I have to at least acknowledge that. And the other people along the way, there's been so many, so many people in this district, so many in this room that have allowed me to come and play because that's what I've done. And there's a bunch of them standing here, and there were a bunch of them down here today that have allowed me to come and, and play with them. And, and that's what it's all been all about. But there's one person that is responsible for everything that's happened. Carl, go back behind the curtain. Will you? And that person is a young lady sitting down here in the middle of this section right here on the front row that isn't truly the wind beneath my wings. She's allowed me to go. We've, we've been together now 56 years. Ooh. And you do the math from 1972 till today at how many years she has encouraged me and allowed me to run all over the country and all over the world to do barbershop things. I couldn't have done it without you, Kitty. And this really belongs to you. Thank you very much.
And to introduce our final inductee, I call Mike Bortz. Come here, Mike. Quote, I think the dealer's choice set an all-time high as far as what is humanly possible to achieve in quartet singing strictly from a vocal standpoint. It's a quartet that to me was the finest singing on the part of four men. It was the greatest ensemble of barbershop sound that I have ever heard and expect to hear as long as I live. That quote was from Bob Johnson, the Society's Music Education and Services Director. That's the kind of impact that the dealer's choice had on him in particular and the entire society. The vocal foundation and one of the our architects of that sound that involves precision vowel matching uh, is our next Southwestern District Hall of Fame inductee. The terminology used to describe this has been in the Barbershop Harmony Society lexicon ever since. We call it expanded sound. Anybody here ever hear of expanded sound? Come on. I, I think everybody's heard it. Absolutely. And the good news is that our nominee didn't keep this a secret. In 1973, he first shared this with the fledgling Dallas Metro chapter. And since it was implemented, the vocal majority has gone on to win 11 gold and three silver medals because of this man's input. But he didn't stop there. He wrote a publication that's available from Harmony, uh, from Harmony Marketplace entitled Basic Group Singing Techniques to share these pure gold concepts with the entire society. And don't let the word basic fool you. Ensembles of all levels of proficiency can put this, uh, this information to good use to improve greatly. Dealer's Choice struck gold at International on their very first attempt, only the second quartet in society history to do so. He's also won two Southwestern District Quartet Championships, one with DC and one with Gatsby, and another one for good measure uh, in Mid-Atlantic District with Bingo Brothers. He was the president of the uh, Association of International Champions. He served on the Society Board of Directors. He chaired an external focus task force uh, as well as the Board of Education Committee. It is my distinct pleasure to present to you a great man of talent, vision, and action, and one of the greatest bass singers in society history, Southwestern District Hall of Fame class of 2012 inductee, Gary Parker. Absolutely. Unfortunately, Gary could not be here today, so he gave me a few words to share with everyone here. First of all, to the Southwestern District Hall of Fame Selection Committee, from the bottom of my heart, my sincerest thanks and grateful appreciation for selecting me to receive this outstanding Lifetime Achievement Award. <sighs> I am deeply touched, humbled, a bit overwhelmed, and very honored to be recognized by my home district for my long-term service and achievements, and to be included with the great names already in the Hall of Fame, many of whom are my barbershop heroes. I'm sorry to be unable to be with you to accept this special honor in person. This weekend, I'm attending a family wedding and reunion in Southern California. I can assure you, however, that I am thinking of you right now with you in spirit. My father and older brother were members of the Fort Worth chapter in the 50s and 60s. Fort Worth, how about that, huh? Come on, let's hear it, Fort Worth. Come on, there you go. Soon after, I moved to Dallas in 1971 to accept my first permanent job, and I visited the Big D chapter. That fateful night, I met the Society's first two-time gold me medalist, Mo Rector, and the international finalist, Doodad's Quartet. 
Before the night was over, I was asked to sing bass in a brand new quartet we called Dealer's Choice. A few months later, I became a charter member of the fledgling Vocal Majority Chorus. Through those game-changing groups over the years, I've had the opportunity to visit, coach, or sing for just about every chapter in the district. Through my professional career has forced, uh, has forced me out of the district for a time. It has always been and always will be my barbershop home. I am so thankful to have been back in the greatest district in the society again for the last several years. Before closing, I must recognize a few present and former Southwestern District members who taught and helped me along the way. First of all, Al Quanley, Bill Thornton, and Brian Beck, the Dealer's Choice Quartet. Absolutely. Matt Huff, the late, the great one, and Joe Lyles, coaches and advisors extraordinaire. And last but not least, Ray Anthony, and of course, Jim Clancy, VM directors. Each of these Hall of Famers deserves a portion of this honor. Finally, and most importantly, thanks to my love of my life, exceptional musician, Sweet Adeline, Queen of Harmony, and Judge Category Specialist, my wife, Ruth Ann, for her constant encouragement, counsel, and support of my barbershop activities. In conclusion, I'm proud and grateful to be a longtime member and supporter of the great Southwestern District of Champions and will continue to work toward paying back a small portion of the exceptional education and harmonious experience the district has provided me over low these many years. Thank you. And just one more thing, QCA members, backstage right now, boys. Thanks. Okay, how about one more round of applause for our new inductee, Keith Wayne Groves, Gary Hanna, Gary Parker. Thank you all very much.
All right, folks, here we go. The results we are looking for. To make the announcements tonight, please welcome our contest administrator, Mr. Bill Lauren, and your district vice president of contest and judging, Mr. <coughs> Dwayne Brobst. Thank you. And on behalf of our judging panel this weekend, we certainly want to thank the Southwestern District for the great hospitality that you've showed to us, the, the audience as well as the convention team, everybody that uh, had a part in hosting us this weekend. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you. The evaluations for the 10 uh, or finalist quartets, nine actually tomorrow, will be done Sunday morning starting at 9 a.m. on the ninth floor of the hotel. Uh, your score sheets that you pick up down here in the front from Bill Ray will have the uh, rooms that you will visit uh, for your evaluations uh, marked in the upper right hand corner. We'll be doing one round of uh, 20 minute evaluations per judge, uh, so you should be out of there by 10 o'clock. Uh, Please uh, be prompt because uh, we need to get these things moving tomorrow morning and uh, we will uh, be able to pick up your score sheets down here from in front. Now I'm going to turn this over to Dwayne and he can announce the results. Thank you so much. Time has come. They're still bringing out the hardware there, I think. Um, but there's one little bit of business that uh, I would like to take care of before we get to tonight's results. Last night, after we got through, we found something in the back. And, and I think that it shouldn't go unnoticed. Uh, that golden cup over there was hidden away in a box in the back, and we found it, so we thought, Wow, wouldn't this be great if we could uh, use that in some way and maybe give it to a quartet? And, and then elder, Elderberry Wine, a couple of the guys with Elderberry Wine, are you back there? Come, come on out, Rob. A couple of guys from Elderberry Wine came and said, hey, if you'll make this the senior's cup, this glorious cup, we'll present it to the new seniors champions. This one right here, yeah. So even though they got silver bowls last night, which seems a little tried and trivial, doesn't it, when you've got a beautiful cup like this, would Jukebox Live come forward so that we can present them with the seniors traveling trophy? Are you here? It must have been a senior moment. Yeah. Are they not here? We'll keep, we'll keep it. Okay. Take it back to Houston with you. Where are they? I guess they're not here. They were supposed to be here. They knew about it. Put it back on the table. We'll take it home. Okay, here's the results that we need for tonight. During the contest, we also had a novice quartet competition that was going on. And the rules say that if there's a quartet that's entered as a novice quartet and they make the finals, if they're entered in the regular contest too, and they make the finals, that we can't announce the winner until tonight, until this is over, or, or the quartet contest is over. So now is the time for the Southwestern District Novice Quartet Champions for 2012. And if you would, each of the quartets, like we did last night, come up on stage when your name is called. Kick back.
They're also the fifth place quartet in the district contest. With a score of 2,617, I might add. What was that? 2,617. Fourth place, the quartet come up please if you would, with a score of 2,632 points, Racketeers. Your third place quartet with a score of 2,673 points, exclamation! Woo! Second place with a score of 2,723 points. Spoiler alert! guys that they come and they pick up things for one quartet and then they get more stuff for another quartet. What's that all about anyhow? Young kids, what are they doing to our society? Huh? I'm going to call out Dexter's Alibi, the 2011 district champions Woo! to present the next trophy. And those trophies go to... <laughs> Good catch! With a score of 2,826 points, bonus track. <laughs> Big silver thing, guys. If you just if you just look, guys, look out there one time so they can see you all at one time again. If you just look up there, does it look like to you out there that our society is in pretty good hands in the next <laughs> uh, in the next 10 to 20 years? Thank you very much. Wait for a picture, guys. Watch the little bouncing light out there for a picture. <laughs> Camera shy? I can't believe it. It's a photo op, guys. Lift with your legs. <laughs> Got it. Thank you very much. We'd like to thank. <laughs>
we're going to move right into the show.